my this talk is on dna replication it is continuation of the previous uh, lecture in which we discussed about dna replication in prokaryotes so here we will discuss what are the differences uh, between dna replication in case of eukaryotic cells as compared to the prokaryotic dna replication fundamentally this both type of uh, in case of eukaryotes and prokaryotes the dna replication is uh, very very much similar like dna polymerases are required in case of eukaryotic dna replication similar to the prokaryotic dna replication and replication goes in 5 prime to 3 prime direction and uh, uh, the replication is semi conservative uh, but what are the differences first is the origin of replication in case of uh, prokaryotic DNA replication, they, we found that only one region of replication was there, while we have here multiple region of replications that are uh, present. And these regions of replication are well characterized uh, structures in lower eukaryotes, but they are much less defined in higher eukaryotes. Yeast, for example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae has defined replication regions, and they are called as autonomously replicating sequences or replicators. Yeast replicators uh, span 150 base pair and about 400 replicators are distributed in 16 haploid yeast genome. So you can see uh, that there are multiple origin of replications are there. Origin of replication you might remember that it means that this is the sequence a particular sequence on the DNA from where from where the DNA replication can be initiated uh, as the chromosome size in case of eukaryotic cells is very large as compared to the prokaryotes so this may be the reason that uh, there are multiple region of replications rather than single region of replication and rate of movement of replication fog in eukaryotes is also very low as compared to the prokaryotes. It's only about 1 20th as observed in E. coli. Uh, that is 50 nucleotides per second. Of course, this 50 nucleotide per second is also quite fast, but it is very low as compared to the 100 nucleotide per second as we found in the uh, prokaryotes and in E. coli. Replication of human chromosome proceeds bidirectionally from many origin of replications. Uh, they are spaced at varying distance apart. If we see the DNA polymerases, there are three DNA polymerases which are important in eukaryotes which perform the major function of the uh, replication. The first is DNA polymerase alpha. This acts as a primase to add RNA primer because you know DNA polymerases cannot initiate uh, uh, the replication uh, the polymerization so they need some primer so this is added by DNA polymerase alpha then we have DNA uh, polymerase delta this is the major enzyme similar to the DNA polymerase 3 enzyme this DNA polymerase delta performs the major function of uh, uh, making the DNA on both strands, leading and lagging strand. And DNA uh, polymerase epsilon, this acts as a DNA polymerase 1, uh, which actually removes, it removes the uh, RNA primer and replaces it with the DNA. However, it cannot seal the NIC, which is sealed by DNA ligase. <coughs> This regulation of replication in eukaryotic cells is also very tightly regulated. However, in this course, it's not uh, our purview to discuss in much detail. I will just give you an overview of it. Uh, this regulation ensures that all cellular DNA is replicated once per cycle. And this is the basic requirement because uh, when the cell has to divide, its DNA should be 
replicated with full fidelity and same number of DNA molecules should be transferred to the next generation of cells, the daughter cells. So this is tightly regulated in a way that it occurs only once per cycle. And much of this regulation involves certain proteins which are called cyclins. And then the cyclin dependent kinases with which they form the complexes. The cyclins are rapidly destroyed by ubiquitin dependent proteolysis at the end of M phase that in the mitosis. So this uh, these cyclins are uh, attached with the cyclin dependent kinases. So as soon as they are destroyed by some signal uh, with the help of this proteolysis the absence of cyclins allows the establishment of a pre-replicative complexes or P pre RCs. This pre-replicative complex, pre-replicative complexes on replication initiation sites. This actually, when this is synthesized, uh, when this is established, pre RC, uh, it allows the cell to go further in the cell division and go for the replication basically here. So there is nothing that is going to stop replication beyond this point. So it means this is all depends on this cyclines which themselves are dependent upon some other signal molecules. And the cyclines are small uh, proteins which are attached to the cyclin dependent kinases. Uh, there are multiple cyclins and CDKs which are present and they control the cell cycle phase from G0, G1, S, G2 and M and uh, you can see here uh, multiple cyclins and there are multiple types of CDKs. As I mentioned earlier, it's uh, not in this preview that I will go into much detail but these are uh, the sum of the cyclines and CDKs, cyclin dependent kinases, uh, different of those which control the cell cycle phases at different levels. Cyclines uh, drive the events of the cell cycle by partnering with uh, a family of enzymes called cyclin dependent kinases. Uh, the cyclin dependent kinase is itself is inactive but the binding of cyclin activates is makes it a functional enzyme that allowing it to modify the target proteins and there are some sort of signals phosphorylations of the some of the uh, proteins that actually can activate the cyclins and cdks but what ultimately with reference to the application is this this is the restriction point which takes place at this place. This is the restriction point. Uh, and once this cell crosses this restriction point, nothing going to stop it, the replication. So here S phase is the DNA synthesis phase. So it goes from this phase to this. And when this uh, transition takes place, uh, this point is restriction point and this is controlled by the cyclin and cyclin dependent kinases as I discussed uh, shortly. Once this cross, uh, th this phase is crossed, uh, nothing going to stop it. So in rapidly growing cells, the pre-RC forms at the end of mitosis phase M phase. In slow growing cells, it doesn't form until the end of G1 as I mentioned in the previous slide. Formation of uh, the pre-RC renders the cell competent for replication. And this event sometimes is called as licensing, meaning it has given the license to start the replication. Initiation of replication in all eukaryotes is the loading of the replicative helicase, which is heterohexameric complex and this uh, heterohexameric complex of mini chromosome maintenance proteins which are termed as MCM. MCM2 to MCM7 these are the protein six proteins which 
uh, actually are loaded as you might remember in case of prokaryotes we found a helicase six uh, six subunits we found there so similarly here it is also heterohexameric complex of many chromosome maintenance protein six of these so you can see closely here so this is the ORC is the origin recognition complex so once again remember these are the proteins which attached uh, in a certain orientation in a certain hierarchy so first is the origin recognition complex and here ATP is utilized and they bind at the origin of origin of the DNA then CD6 comes in uh, this is cell division cycle protein these uh, and again ATP is utilized here so there are two ATPs that are bound and then this uh, CDT CDT is CDC 10 dependent transcript 1 uh, and these are the MCM 2 to 7 this CDT plays the function of loading of these MCM proteins uh, at this place so you can see uh, this is the basically this is the uh, place uh, where this uh, uh, all these initiating proteins are bound along with ATP and this uh, MCM proteins heterohexameric protein these are loaded with the help of CDD on this complex and then this ATPs are hydrolyzed and this function of CDT is over and uh, this DNA replication is initiated at this place and it continuously it goes on elongation in the similar way in the and then finally we see the termination okay now the ends of the linear DNA how these are replicated in fact ends of DNA cannot be replicated in somatic cells why they cannot be replicated because the rep there is no place where replication machinery can bind whereas in case of uh, uh, circular DNA molecule no such problem exists because of the circular nature of the DNA so here because uh, uh, this replication machinery cannot bind to the ends so what happens is that ends of the linear DNA are shortened with each round of cell division with each round of replication followed by the cell division and in case of uh, uh, so what would happen uh, to the generations uh, generation after generation it means that uh, DNA should be shortened but this is not the case so in fact what is happening here is that these ends of the linear DNA are shortened in somatic cells but they are uh, regenerated in case of uh, gamete cells so that every new organism gets the full DNA and in case of somatic cells if they are uh, shortened uh, they, it, there is a question that uh, there might be some important part of the DNA molecule it's part of some important gene that can be uh, that uh, can be deleted out but this is not the case because end of the linear DNA has a certain specific sequence which is called as telomer sequence and these are uh, present in the form of repeats there are multiple repeats of uh, these telomeres are present in eukaryotic cells so these basically with every round of uh, DNA replication these telomeres are shortened so however the research has shown some important uh, implications that of this shortening one is that the aging there is some this shortening of the telomeres in somatic cells has something to do with aging but in case of uh, gamete cells as i mentioned that these cells are these uh, uh, ends are regenerated 
so they are regenerated with the help of an enzyme which is called as telomerase it acts as a reverse transcriptase it contains this protein and rna this R protein gives uh, a, this whole machinery a place at the end of the dna and this uh, rna uh, is acts as a template molecule so this uh, telomerase it performs the reverse transcriptase activity using rna as template and making the telomer repeat with the help of polymerization and after making a short stretch uh, this is whole thing is translocated and it starts its uh, polymerization further so ends can be regenerated up to a certain level which is again is regulated by uh, some uh, proteins <coughs> this shows uh, the end of the linear dna uh, these linear dna in fact is not hanging around uh, freely because uh, uh, if uh, it hangs out freely it is a good substrate for the dnases or nucleases so end of the linear DNA uh, that is bound by telomer duplex DNA binding proteins which are present here and these strands one of these strands is TG another one is the CA you might have noticed that this TG strand is regenerated and its uh, other strand can be regenerated by a simple process, process of DNA polymerase 3 but end of this uh, TG strand is remain single stranded and it binds to the other part with the help of TRF1 and TRF2 these are the telomer repeat factor 1 and 2 these are the proteins so this is the structure of the end of the linear DNA in case of eukaryotic cells which exists in, in that way uh, so I end my lecture here because I just wanted to discuss some of the differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic DNA. I may uh, deliver some lecture on in details of the eukaryotic DNA uh, replication, uh, but this is as I mentioned, this is uh, uh, not in preview of this uh, class. So maybe in some advanced class, I will deliver a comprehensive lecture on this. Thank you very much.